Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Ashley Rice, and this is Light Matters for June 26, 2013. On today's show, holograms are enabled by a $10 optical chip, Raman spectroscopy and nanoprobes seek to detect infections early, multi-view 3D photography is simplified, and a microphone listens with light. An optical chip built by an MIT graduate student at a cost of $10 could be a game changer for holography, enhancing the resolution of conventional 2D displays and enabling color holographic video suitable for 3D television. In holograms, light beams pass through diffraction fringe, bending the light so that they emerge as a host of different angles. To produce a holographic video, diffraction fringes must be created from patterns displayed on an otherwise transparent screen. The problem with this approach is that the pixels of the diffraction pattern must be as small as the wavelength of the light they are bending, a feat most display technologies cannot achieve. The new hologram generating approach, developed by grad student Daniel Smalley, generates waveguides under small crystals of lithium niobate that confine the light traveling through them. Metal electrodes were deposited onto each waveguide to produce acoustic waves. Using the new technique, Smalley is building a prototype color holographic video display whose resolution is roughly that of a standard definition TV and which can update video images 30 times a second, fast enough to produce the illusion of motion. At the heart of the display is an optical chip resembling a microscope slide that Smalley built for about $10. The technique was detailed in nature. Nanoprobes used in conjunction with Surface Enhanced Raman Scattering, or SIRS, can be used to reveal a specific molecular marker's optical fingerprint. The work is a proof-of-principle approach to using light to detect infections before patients even show symptoms. Duke University biomedical engineers and genome researchers developed the approach, demonstrated in human samples, and are now developing the technique for placement on a chip. Such a diagnostic device could be portable and provide fast, simple, and reliable patient information. The silver-based nanoparticle they developed targets a specific molecular marker that spills into the bloodstream at the first stages of an infection. When light is aimed at the sample, the nanoparticle attached to the molecular marker will reflect a distinct optical fingerprint. Coupling the target molecule with a metal nanoparticle or nanostructure enhances the Raman response by the SIRS effect by a million times or more. The study will pave the way for the development of devices that measure multiple genome-derived markers to assist with faster, more accurate diagnosis of infectious disease at the point of care. The work appears online in Analytica Chimica Acta. A small checkerboard pattern plastic film inserted beneath the lens of an ordinary camera can transform the device into a light field camera capable of producing multi-perspective images. The first commercial application of computational photography is the light field camera, which measures not only the intensity of incoming light, but also its angle of arrival. This information can be used to produce multi-perspective 3D images or to refocus a shot even after it's been captured. Current light field cameras trade a good deal of resolution for that extra angle information. A camera with a 20 megapixel sensor, for instance, will yield a refocused image of only one megapixel, and such devices cost nearly $400. Researchers in the camera culture group at MIT's Media Lab aim to change that with a system they're calling Foci. The device, which can produce a full 20 megapixel multi-view 3D image from a single exposure of a 20 megapixel sensor, relies on a small rectangle of plastic film printed with a unique checkerboard pattern that is inserted beneath the lens of an ordinary DSLR camera. Software does the rest. The new work complements the camera culture group's ongoing glasses-free 3D display research. Foci represents the light field as a grid of square patches. Each patch, in turn, consists of a 5x5 grid of blocks. Each block represents a different perspective on a 121 pixel patch of the light field, so foci captures 25 perspectives in all. Conventional 3D systems, such as those used to produce 3D movies, capture only two perspectives. With multi-perspective systems, a change in viewing angle reveals new features of an object, as it does in real life. The key to the system is a novel way to represent the grid of patches corresponding to any given light field. The work will be presented in July at SIGGRAPH 2013 in Anaheim, California. Syntef has developed a sensor that combines two optical phenomena, interference and diffraction, to make microphones hypersensitive. A microphone based on this sensor would be able to see where the sound comes from. It would be able to pick up a speaker's voice and filter out other noise sources. A microphone is completely dependent on a membrane that picks up pressure waves produced by sound. Much like a drum, the membrane vibrates when it's impacted by a sound. Then you have a reference surface in the background, and the distance between these two surfaces registers the sound. The optical position sensor developed at Syntef's MENA lab does this by measuring light waves from a microscopically small laser. The sensor is no more than a millimeter in diameter and only 100 nanometers thick and can measure minute movements and extremely quiet sounds. If the membrane is light enough to oscillate freely in the air, the microphone can become directionally sensitive. 
Exploiting interference and diffraction enabled the researchers to measure movement of less than the diameter of an atom using the sensor. The team created special grooved microstructures on the reference surface, which lies directly underneath the microphone membrane. When the laser illuminates those microstructures, they can read off the direction in which the light is reflected by means of photodetectors. Norsonic, a Norwegian noise measurement equipment supplier, intends to use the new microphone to measure both sound pressure and acoustic power. Additional applications include accelerometers, gyroscopes, vibration and pressure sensors, geophones for seismic shooting, photoacoustic gas sensors, and sensors for highly irradiated sites. That's it for this edition of Light Matters, the Photonics Industry's only weekly newscast. As always, you can write to us with your comments or questions at lightmatters@photonics.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Thank you.